What if your latest in-game purchase came with a unique serial number and was not fungible? Well, that's, uh, that's Ubisoft's latest thing. Yes, Ubisoft are going into NFTs, and they're doing so with the hit game Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Obviously a game that had a lot of drama, and I imagine they're doing it in Breakpoint purely because if they did it in Rainbow Six Siege and it backfired, that would really hurt one of their big popular games. So let's talk about what's actually happening here and really dive into this and work out what uh, basically what the deal is. So Ubisoft, of course, are moving into NFTs. They are uh, announcing a new game called Digits, which are going to be the first NFTs playable in AAA games, which obviously is what we were all asking for. Huh, yeah, now they're going to be headed to Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and this isn't something that should really be uh, that surprising because Ubisoft actually, a decent bit earlier, said they were looking into this. Now, of course, Breakpoint itself is the game that came out with all the microtransactions, seemingly with design considerations that were kind of... Uh, making it more of a numbersy loot shooter game, which is really not what Ghost Recon is. Of course, doing this in Siege would maybe be a bit too high profile, so we're fairly sure they're just doing this because this is a safe space to do a test within. Now, you may be wondering, how is this going to work? What is what is going to be up with my M4A1 Tactical Wolves NFT or my Wolf Enhanced Helmet A NFT? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is very exciting. Very, very exciting. Now, first, if you were thinking about NFTs and you were wondering about the environmental side of things because of transaction, well, the energy, basically the energy expenditure with, uh, you know, the, the proof of work uh, blockchains, which obviously does uh, vary, you know, between them all. Uh, but digits are stored on a proof of stake blockchain rather than a proof of work one. A single transaction on the Tezos uh, network. Tezos is like the you know the, the chain that's uh, that's being used for this. Uses roughly the same amount of energy as streaming 30 seconds of video. So look, fair enough. That's a hell of a lot better than the worst of what people would be putting out there. And of course, just about everything you do digitally does have some form of energy expenditure, uh, you know, tied to it. Now. Digits are going to be introduced to the PC version of Breakpoint and tied to Ubisoft Connect. And to support this, there's a new platform called Ubisoft Quartz that is going to be set up uh, in order to manage the acquisition of these NFTs. It entered beta December 9th, and they are promising special free digit drops on the Dece uh, December 9th, 12th, and 15th to reward early adopters. More drops planned in 2022. Now, you might be thinking, oh, wow, NFTs in a game. It's just what I've always wanted. Please tell me how this makes my cosmetics a more enjoyable experience. Well, I'm glad you asked, gamer. Here's how it's going. Each digit is a unique collectible that features its own serial number. Oh. Can you imagine, like... You buy that DLC sword in Assassin's Creed, and it has a unique serial number? Ha, huh, sploosh, right? Isn't that exciting? And it will keep track of its current and previous owners for years to come. That's not something you need an NFT for. That has nothing to do with this cosmetic item, this 3D model you can put on your character being associated with a token on a blockchain. It's not that you don't need an NFT for this. When you buy a crafted item in World of Warcraft on the auction house, it will in fact say what player created it, and it would be very easy to say what player previously had it in their inventory. Oh dear. But no, no, this makes players an integral part of the game's history. None of this requires an NFT to work. Digits are playable cosmetic items that provide players the ability to personalize their experience and complete their missions with style. All cosmetic items are playable cosmetic items. The fact that an NFT is attached to these ones has absolutely no bearing on this statement that Ubisoft just said. This is a load of wank. With digits, items are no longer bound to a player's game inventory since they can be put on sale for other eligible players to acquire outside of the Ubisoft system. That's basically just saying whoever owns the token has the associated, you know, the, the item associated with that token. Um, have you ever traded a knife in CSGO? Those aren't NFTs. 
it it is in fact the case everyone that items being bound to a player's game inventory has absolutely nothing to do with an nft so essentially all of these player facing reasons why the nfts are cool they're all wank the difference is i suppose you'll be able to sell them to people right so you might be able to earn some coin from it and i think ubisoft see this as a way to deepen engagement in their game basically and obviously try to try to make some money off this um you know be that like a transaction fee or whatever i'm not 100 percent sure uh right now the whole thing does seem bizarre though i mean tying an id number to a cosmetic item just means nothing and yes everyone's helmet will look the same but it will have a number on it that will technically make it unique again you don't need an nft for this it's just the sort of thing they're trying to make a market exist i suppose so that they can benefit from that market but it really does not give much unique value to players you could say that the resale value of your cosmetic is is a part of this that's the case i think that's a level of money infiltrating the game experience that we really don't want to see though i mean is, is this just a fancy way of doing a high value rare knife in csgo is that kind of what's going on here look i'm not against nfts or you know blockchain stuff in principle it's just i want to see a cool unique novel implementation that actually adds usability adds value and of course does have the energy consumption uh you know side of things be covered right so like i'm not going to be here you know be here and be a luddite against the technology just because it is what it is i just want the use case to be really really good and that's really where it gets rough here because with nfts i can see a lot of use cases uh for them now as financial instruments so here's you know as an example uh, let's just say you have a line of nfts a bunch of your mates buy those nfts and of course you're all rich so you buy them for a high amount of money well, that then is just increasing the value of your portfolio and doing the same for your friends because you're telling the market that this thing is worth this amount of money. Kind of analogous to the classic, you know, like the art market, right? But the other side to this then is uh, cash loss uh, harvesting, which is uh, something from investing. Let's just say you have one stock, right? And it goes really good. But if you sell that stock, you'll have to pay capital gains tax. Well, if you have an other stock that is decreased in value, so you've lost money in that investment, but you want to sell your other stock, what you do is you sell your stock at a loss, and then you off use that loss to offset your gain. So it's, it's a very common thing done in investing. With this and the NFTs, you can just have a portfolio of NFTs along with your rich friends who have all got the same. You sell one of your NFTs that you purchase for 50 grand, you sell it for 10 grand, you harvest that loss to offset against your tax, and of course, you're still doing everything you're doing to make the overall portfolio value of your NFTs go up. So these are not really the sorts of uses that people are really hyped about. They're not really intrinsic to the NFTs, I think. They are, I mean, it's, I think, honestly, a lot of it is just using some of the same dynamics that surround the classic art, uh, art market. But then it's a new sort of techie version of it. And, you know, using that obviously with crypto generally being on the rise. And look, I'm, I'm pretty pro-crypto. The, the idea that, you know, cryptocurrency is going to let somebody, uh, you know, own this currency regardless of what country they're in, you know, across borders and all of that in a way that's more decentralized. I mean, I can absolutely see the value in that. You know, if you're in, say, a country with hyperinflation going on, like there's a lot of really great use cases and a lot that could be said for the democratization of things. But it all gets tricky when, you know, NFT is pretty rife with scams and all of that stuff. And that's why when Ubisoft goes in, it just starts to feel more like a way for them to make some money or perhaps, you know, find themselves having created, uh, you know, a platform or an overall economic engine surrounding the market of their own NFTs that they can somehow profit from. Is this a surprise? No, it is not. They told people they wanted to be one of the key players here. And interestingly enough, the price of Tezos has jumped 37% after Ubisoft revealed that their NFT launch would be on its network. I mean, that's where I'd really like to see, you know, are, are there people in the Ubisoft team who are heavily uh, invested into Tezos, right? Who have, you know, purchased a bunch of those coins to then have this news so that the price would go up. Kind of hard to know. Now, obviously, the industry reaction to this has been very predictable. It's been mass condemnation, you know? Five, fewer than 5% likes on a video with 22,000 dislikes that Ubisoft, of course, then ended up uh, delisting. 
which uh, does show that uh, you know they're not particularly happy uh, about how it looks. So that's the thing. I mean, playable and energy efficient Ubisoft NFTs. Look, energy efficient, thumbs up. A playable NFT. How does that differ from the, the the cosmetics you're doing? I mean, ultimately, from a gameplay perspective, it's just here's the 3D model that goes onto your character as a, as a means of customization. Just that it has got a degree of scarcity to it, and uh, you know there's only so many are going to float around the market, so there's a bit more prestige in having them. But that prestige is just dollar prestige. And within gaming, I mean, we generally don't like that sort of thing, do we? So it doesn't seem like the sort of thing that's going to be fantastic for gamers or fantastic for games. And as for the rest of the industry, well, you know, I I think I'm pretty on board with what Phil Spencer is saying. You know, he's saying that there's a lot of speculation and experimentation. Um, Some of that's, uh, you know maybe feeling a bit more exploitive exploitative than about entertainment. He says, I don't think it necessitates that every NFT game is exploitative. I just think we're kind of in the journey of people figuring it out. And that's the sort of thing. If you give me a use case for NFTs that I, you know, I look at, at it and I think, well, that's genuinely really novel. There's a great utility to this and you've solved the transaction energy costs. Thumbs up. I am pro new technologies that are really cool. There's a lot of fantastic stuff Uh, you know, in and around blockchain. So I'm not going to be against all of that, but it's when it just sort of feels like it's, you know, hustle culture, quick buck stuff that's going on. That's, you know, just it's a bit of a nah. And you look at this and you're like, who is this going to serve? Is this serving people who play games? I don't really think it is. As for Jeff Keighley of the Game Awards, also not impressed, said we're not doing any NFT stuff. So there you go. Non-fungible tokens in games. Ubisoft are the first of the AAA publishers to jump in there. I'll be very interested to see how things end up going. I, I, I definitely say that much. And, uh, you know, just tracking. How, how much money do these go for? I mean, can it be a situation where it's like, oh, wow, you you own the one of the limited edition M4A1 Tactical Wolves. Could, could you get that and resell it for more money later? Is that the sort of thing they're doing? You know, we'll just have to see how the whole thing pans out, won't we? So that's it for today. Now you know the news. And, uh, you know, hopefully with this, you can understand a little bit more of the sort of the NFT game. And it's funny, you know, I, I remember there's one person who's super in, into the NFTs. Somebody explained how, uh, basically, how it works on a technological way that an image will display on an end user's computer. And they got really angry because it turns out they didn't understand how the internet works and seemingly didn't understand that for an image to be to be displayed on your computer, your computer has to download that from a server so that your web browser can display it. So this, this person saw that, right? And was like, oh my God, the sanctity of my NFT is being violated. How do I get around this problem? It was like, mate, you don't get it. You don't get it, and you're a pretty major NFT, like, figurehead. What the f- what's going on? So, these are interesting times. I hope you found this to be an interesting video, and I hope, you know, hopefully you learned a, a few things from it as well, um, such as those financial instruments that these things could really just end up, you know, be, being used for by the people who've got enough money to make use of those sorts of things. Anyway, have a lovely day. I thought this was a fun little topic, and with that, I'll see you next time.